It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl. Today, we continue with our semifinal eliminations. We have just two games left before we hit, yes, the championship match here in this 35th year of Science Bowl. An unusual year coming to you on Zoom because of the pandemic. All of our students are safely at home. I'm here in the Science Bowl studio in Landover, and we've changed a few things. Our students don't have buzzers as they would if they were here next to each other, but we still give them 50 points just for showing up and looking as good as they do. And we still have, we still have the same six categories that we've had throughout our history. And if you're not familiar with our program, these are our categories. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. On today's game, each of our two schools, Judith Hoyer and Longfields, will each get 18 questions, three each in our six categories. One of a five-point question, a 15, and a 25. And at the end of the game, the team with the higher score will move on and play again for the chance to become that second finalist in this year's competition. All right, let's meet now our first team, and they hail from Judith P. Hoyer Montessori School, and let's meet Justin. Justin waved everybody at home. He's looking good out there. All matching shirts there, proclaiming their loyalty to their wonderful school. And uh, Alex, Alex, how you doing today? And Dylan, all right, I know she's ready to, and raring to go as well. They all have smiles on their face. They're great kids. And play along with us today and see how many of these questions you can get right. Um, they'll be challenging. Here we go. Let's get to the green things questions. Judith P. Hoyer, here is your green things question for five points. The journal kept by a ship's captain has what same name as the green thing you throw on a fire? Do you guys know what it is? Is it uh -oh. green? <laughs> Any ideas? If you have a fire at home or you have a fire in your backyard, if you want to keep it going, you throw a log on the fire and a ship's Journal is called a log. That's where blog comes from. All right, let's try the 15-point question. Tobacco plants were long grown here in Prince George's County because they were a source of what addictive chemical? Nicotine. Nicotine is absolutely right. Yeah, you guys knew that one. Good, you got yourself 15 points. 25 points, green things. Just as bamboo is a panda's favorite and necessary food. This plant is the necessary food source of the monarch butterfly. People plant it to help the monarchs survive. I hope you've planted it. Well, this isn't mine, but, but uh, the one I think, like, like a sunflower. Say it again for me, Justin. Just uh, lean in towards your microphone so we can hear you a little better. I said, I said a sunflower. No, a sunflower is a good guess. It's called milkweed. Milkweed. It has those pods and it co pops open and it looks like there is uh, dust flying all over the place, little things flying about the seeds. Let's go to the zoo. There's a new Disney animated movie called Raya and the Last Dragon. And Raya has a little sidekick animal called Tuk Tuk. It's a hybrid 
between a pug dog and one of these nine banded mammals with distinctive armor. Um, armadillo. Say it again, Justin. Armadillo. It's an armadillo, absolutely right. It's kind of a bug and a mammal combined together. Nice answer, got yourself five points. 15 points in the zoo. Well, we humans, when we're young, like you guys are, are called adolescents. Young birds who have their first set of feathers aren't called adolescents, but rather this J initial name, a word that often precedes delinquents when human kids are naughty. Juvenile? Juvenile is right. You guys are definitely not juvenile delinquents. Young birds, first set of feathers are juveniles. Excellent. Multiple choice question and a visual for Zoo for 25. Look at this. This very rare dwarf giraffe named Gimli has a normal sized neck but very short legs because which of these bones did not grow properly? The ribs, the lumbar vertebrae, or the radius? Um, I don't think all right, so we have ribs, lumbar vertebrae, or radius, a bone or bones that didn't grow properly, giving that giraffe very short legs. Right, uh, Justin, you get to pick, and again, lean in because that's when I can hear you better. The, the vertebrae, actually, if you remember, your arm has a radius and an ulna, so the radius bone in that giraffe's leg is the one that did not grow properly. Let's go to your last three questions in the opening round, the body system questions. Have you ever read Alice in Wonderland or seen that story? Well, there's a nasty queen in Alice in Wonderland who kept sentencing people, sentencing people to death by saying, off with their heads. Her name, ironically, was the queen of this caring cardiac organ in your body. Queen of hearts. That's right, she was the queen of hearts. Uh, not a very good name considering her personality. Good, you got five points. 15 points. People who recovered from COVID-19 were asked to donate this liquid part of their blood to those still suffering because it contained useful antibodies. Name the liquid part of your blood. Do you know what it is? Liquid part. Liquid part. It's called the plasma the plasma, and the people who recovered from COVID, you know, they would donate their blood, they would spin it around, and they would take that liquid part, put the red blood cells back, give the liquid part to people who still had it because there were antibodies would help them recover. All right, here's your last question, multiple choice body systems. If you break your coccyx, C-O-C-C-Y-X, and I hope you never do, if you break your coccyx, have you fractured your shin bone, your funny bone, or your tail bone? So you're sitting there asking yourself, all right, what do I know and what don't I know? What can I eliminate here to try to get to the right answer? If you break your coccyx, C-O-C-C-Y-X, have you fractured your shin bone, your funny bone, or your tailbone? I don't. What, what I haven't heard not? any uh, uh, suggestions here. What's on your I, mind I, there, uh, Dylan? What are you thinking? <laughs> Dylan, what are you thinking? Tailbone. Tailbone. All right. Uh, what about you, Alex? I, I think it's a shin bone. You think it's a shin bone? All right, it's up to you, Justin. We've heard options here. Your teammates, some, one thinks it's the shin, one thinks it's the tailbone. You get to choose. 
tailbone. tailbone? It is the tailbone. Absolutely right. We human beings once had a tail, and now it is shorter. And the shin bone is in your uh, leg, and your funny bone's in your arm. All right, you got those 25 points, which really helped your score, which means, Judith P. Hoyer, you now have 115 points. We'll be back with you in just a couple moments and talk to you about yourselves and your schools and ask you your last nine questions. Nice going, nice going. It is now time to meet the outstanding team from Longfields Elementary School. Boy, they're ready and raring to go out there. They've got their matching shirts on. They are the science squad indeed on the science bowl. Let's say hello to Nyla. Nyla, wave to everybody. Hey, Nyla. Good to have you back today. And James, James, and Jared. That's the way to do it. I know. He's a great player. He's got lots of enthusiasm. Who is my captain? That's, That's me. me. That, that would be, me. be, that would be James. James. All right, James, good. All right, again, let's get our first nine questions. Three from our initial categories, a five, a 15, and a 25. Here is your green things question, Longfields, for five points. These famous trees at Washington's Tidal Basin have been bred to produce beautiful blossoms instead of any large-sized fruits. Okay. Orchids. Cherry blossoms. Yeah, you got it right. The cherry blossom. You know, everybody goes down there and thinks, where are the cherries? Well, they've been bred. It's an ornamental tree. They're very, very tiny. They're not very good to eat. Got yourself five points. Good start. 15 points in green things. A film about Nobel Peace Prize winner Wangari Mathai, who got people throughout her country of Kenya in Africa to fight deforestation by planting trees, that film is called Taking What Plant Part? Taking uh, what part? A the it name of the be. film is Taking What? About going out and planting trees. Branch? I'm thinking branch. Taking branch. Actually, correct word is taking root. Taking root. root. Something that takes root starts to grow. Let's go for 25 points. It's a multiple choice question. The array of petals on a flower has what C initialed name? That means little crown. And it's also the name of a type of Toyota automobile. Is it a Calyx, a Corolla, or a Corona? Okay. Okay, okay so, so um, it's a Corolla. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure, sure it's a Corolla, Corolla as well. What do you think? Corolla. Corolla. It is the Corolla. You got yourself 25 <laughs> points. Excellent work there, Longfields. Let's go to the zoo. America's largest songbird that feeds mostly on carrion, dead things like vultures, is as much purple as it is black of feather, which might explain why the NFL team in Baltimore wears purple jerseys. Name the bird. Okay, okay guys. guys. Um, is it y'all think? Wait, wait. Ravens. Royals. Royals. Yeah, the Ravens. Ravens, Ravens. Baltimore, Baltimore Ravens. 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 Absolutely right. The Baltimore Ravens wear purple like I'm wearing purple here today. They are black of feather, but they are also purple of feather. Got yourself five points, 15 points. If you know anything about the Harry Potter books, you may know this one. It will help you. Cerberus, C-E-R-B-E-R-U-S, the dog of the underworld, and Fluffy the dog in the Harry Potter stories, are both tricephalic, T-R-I-C-E-P-H-A-L-I-C. -E they are both tricephalic, meaning they have what? Three heads. I'm the only one in the team that read all the heads. <laughs> Boy, James, you were on that as fast as could be. You got it right. They have three heads, Fluffy and Cerberus both. Nice answer. For 25 points, all right, this is 25 points in Zoo Parade, and it is a visual question. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. All right, I want you to imagine if clams like these and oysters and snails were actors, you couldn't tell them like you can a human actor before a performance to go out and break a leg. 
but you could tell them to put their best one of these body parts forward, a part they do have that you're looking at, even though it's boneless. Do put your really best happy? what forward. Guys, guys, really guys um, it really, it really I, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna, gonna answer, answer right, right, now. right now. This is not gonna be my answer. It, it sounds, sounds like what, but, but I, don't I don't think it was. It, it, even though it's boneless, it has to be put. It doesn't, it doesn't have one. Yeah, I think it might be put your foot into it. It's like, it's like put, your put your best foot. You got but, that right. Put your but, best but, foot forward. That's going. exactly right, guys. I loved how you arrived at that answer. You got yourself 25 more points. Let's go to the body systems. Five points. A Washington Nationals pitcher was hospitalized recently for the removal of this T initialed endocrine gland in the neck that helps control metabolism and thus energy levels. Tonsils? Throat? It would be neither. Tonsils? Yeah. Yeah. I, I said tonsils. I, tonsils. I hear tonsils. Uh, uh, Nyla, I hear mm -hmm. throat. Uh, and James, what are you thinking? I'm thinking neither. Because tonsils, I'm believing that tonsils is a type of tooth. I believe. All right. Uh, the, the captain is right. It is neither. The key there was endocrine gland. Uh, it is called the thyroid, the thyroid gland, which is here. But I liked your oh, options. Oh, we went over that. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, sometimes that always ha Oh, you kick yourself. I knew that. Here's the 15-point question. A pacemaker implant is located near your heart. The doctor puts it inside to help your heart continue to beat, whereas a Cochlear implant, C-O-C-H-L-E-A-R, is placed inside a person's what? Hmm. Cochlear. Does, does, I, does, does anyone like know? know? So I, I think it's the origin that of the word, like the word. To do something better that they can't do now. Um. Um. You put it in their ear. You put it in your ear so it helps you to hear better. Cochlea, tough question. Here's the Very last tough. question for you in the opening round. 25 points in body systems, Longfields. If someone is colorblind, they typically confuse what two colors, the first and the fourth in the visible spectrum. Okay. okay. So, so it, it, the first, first one would be red. red. So, so boy G boy G. Red and green. You got red it. Green. Red and green it is. All Let's right. Go. Thank you, Captain. You got yourself 25 more points. Yes, indeed. 150 points. That's a great start. You're in good shape. I'll see you guys in a couple minutes. Talk to you about yourself and your schools and ask you your last nine questions. Keep it up. It is now time to talk to the team from Judith P. Hoyer Montessori. And they've been here before. They've won twice already. And that's why they're back. They're here competing. They are this close to a county championship. And before we ask them any more questions, let's find out about themselves and their school. Let's start with the captain, Justin. Justin, tell us, what is it about Hoyer that makes it such a great school? Everybody talks about it. Well, it's a high school and most other schools. And I know you have great teachers over there, and uh, your coach, Cheryl Strong, has been, she is, she is so excited about Science Bowl. Every year she says, Mr. C, sign us up, sign us up. And, you know, you're very lucky because she was once one of the top teachers. She still is one of the top teachers, but she was a nominee for Teacher of the Year a few years ago out of the thousands and thousands of teachers. So you have uh, an absolute gem there in Miss Strong. And Tracy Spivey White, your wonderful principal, too. What do you want to do someday, Justin, after you get out of school? Have you thought about that? Um, I, but it could um, um, just lean a little closer because I'm just getting every other word. I said I, said I have, but, but I. Yeah, we have plenty of time to make, because you're going to have a lot of experiences like this that may direct you in a different way, but you're going to be successful whatever you choose to do. You're a great captain. Let's talk to your teammate there, Alex. Hey, Alex, nice to have you back again. Nice to have on the science ball, and uh, uh, let me ask you as well. Uh, let me ask you. Tell me a little bit about uh, 
why you like going to school at Hoyer, even though you're not physically there today? Because they, they, they do, you, learn, you learn a lot. Of, you do do a, a lot. You learn an awful lot there because I know the Montessori model, you're all working together, and uh, it, uh, it has a, been a proven, effective method of teaching and learning. What do you want to do someday, Alex? I need to be a well, good luck in that because I know you're a great student. You're very disciplined, and uh, it's always great to have you here on the show. Let's talk to your teammate, Dylan. And Dylan, nice to have you with us today. You look a little serious out there today, but I know you're having, I hope you're having some fun here today. What do you like about the Science Bowl? Why did you want to do this? Um, I want to do it. I was in science. Yeah, well, you're a great science student, and this is the place for you. And I hope uh, that you participate in Kids for Science, the science fair uh, that we have here in the county. And I hope you go on and play yeah, our game when you get to middle school, and maybe go on and play in It's Academic when you get to high school, because uh, you're a great player. What do you want to do someday? I want to, I want to be a professional. Professional athlete, did you say? Yes. yes. All right. Well, yeah. Keep your body in shape and your mind in shape, and uh, you're going to be uh, you're going to be successful. Nice to have you with us today. Let's get back to the game here and ask you your next nine questions. Here they come. Let's get physical, science, potpourri, and Dateline science. Let's get physical for five points. <clears throat> A bolide, B O L I D E. If you've never heard of that, I'm not surprised. A bolide is the biggest of these fireballs that can occasionally streak through the sky and then explode when they hit Earth's atmosphere? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing Justin, I think I heard you say the answer. Could you say it again? Meteor? A meteor, absolutely right. A bolide is a huge meteor. Good, five points. Let's get physical for 15. <clears throat> in the Bible, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were threatened with destruction by fire and brimstone. Brimstone once meant this chemical element symbolized by the letter S and is formed during volcanic eruptions. Um, it is sulfur. sulfur. Absolutely right. Sulfur on the periodic table. You're two for two. For 25 points, and let's get physical. A hadron, H-A-D-R-O-N, is any of the hundreds of particles that can exist inside an atomic nucleus. The two most familiar subatomic particles in the nucleus are these two. What do you guys think? Um, oh, oh, I think, I, th I think it's neutrons. I think, I think you got it, Justin. Say it again. Neutrons. Yes, sir. Last moment, you pulled it out. Neutrons and protons. Got yourself twenty-five points. You needed those. Nice work. Three for three. See, I thought you were going to get all these. You're proving, you're proving my prediction right. Here's potpourri for five points. The botanist Luther Burbank developed hundreds of new fruits and flowers by crossing different plants. He came up with a new fruit called a plumcot, P-L-U-M-C-O-T, which was a cross between a plum and what other fruit? Apricot. Apricot is right. You got it. Five points. Good work. Potpourri for 15. Cryogenics. C-R-Y-O-G-E-N-I-C-S. Cryogenics is not the study of tears. But should you cry while working in a cryogenics lab, your tears might do this. Freeze. Freeze is right, because cryogenics is the study of frozen organisms. You got it. All right. 25 points is a visual. 
This C initialed word describes the white aura you see right there surrounding the sun that can be seen during an eclipse. The same C initialed word describes the tiny crowns that explain the name of the virus that causes COVID-19. Corona? Corona is right. The coronavirus and the corona around the sun. You're six for six. Dateline for five points. This Italian astronomer who discovered sunspots was also the first to note that Jupiter had four moons, which are now named for him. Galileo. Yes, indeed, it is Galileo, the Galilean moons. For 15 points, scientists examining, examining meteorites that have landed on Antarctica think that they, long ago, seeded life on this planet because somewhere from outer space, they brought in these kinds, kinds of acids that are the building blocks of proteins. Could you, Could you repeat the question? Yes. The meteorites that landed on Antarctica are thought to have brought in from outer space certain kinds of acids. These acids are the ones that are the building blocks of proteins. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, the building blocks of proteins uh, are the amino acids. A M I N O. Amino acids was the right answer. Still, you got most everything else. Let's go for the 25 point question in Dateline. Women scientists have long been overlooked. That is now changing. But Rosalind Franklin, a woman, for instance, performed crucial work in identifying the DNA double helix. But as one writer put it, she got the elbow, while what other two men got the Nobel. What two men won the Nobel Prize for discovering the DNA double helix? Two names. What do you, what do you guys think of that? They discovered, they discovered the, the Alex. Alex, Alex Dillon. Dillon. Mm -hmm. This is something I hope you've heard of. It revolutionized our understanding of why we are what we are, what our genes are made of. Watson and Crick were their names. Watson and Crick. Wow, a dynamite round there. You have 210 points. You're sitting pretty. Let's see if that holds up and wins this game. We'll be back with you and your coach and your principal and the other team in just a few moments. Nice work, guys. All right, let's meet the team from Longfields. They really had a great first round. Let's see if they can keep that momentum going. Let's talk to them about themselves and their schools. Let's start with James there, Captain. James, you seem to be really into the science ball. Uh, you play so well. How do you know so much science? So, so I know so much science. science. Uh, I, read I read a lot of Harry Potter. Potter. I, uh, I really want to be an Air Force pilot, and then, because like, that's the first step, step to becoming an astronaut, astronaut, and I want to become an astronaut. Wow. And that's how, like, I've been reading up on a bunch of, I have a lot of, uh, those little, but true books. You are doing all the right stuff. I read up. I read up. I also have those little, uh, natural, natural, natural National Geographic Kids magazine, magazine they come in monthly. Wow. Boy, uh, you make me swell with pride because you're doing all the things you should be doing as a science student, as a young man, and uh, you got a great personality, and I like how you check in with your teammates there, and so you want to be an astronaut. Uh, you're going to do it. You're going to make it. We're going to see you up there someday. Good luck to you, young man. Let's meet your teammates here. Let's go to Jared. Hey, Jared. Jared, you have so much enthusiasm for this game. Is this something you always thought you wanted to do? Um, no, no, I. It just, it just came, across came across my path. Wow. So uh, in science, we say that serendipity, something that presents itself and all of a sudden, whoa, this is a good fit because you're a good fit for this game. How do you know so much science? Oh, uh, uh, well, here it is. So. Um, I like a lot of elements, 
So. It shows. Just, it shows that you have a, a curiosity about life and you're finding out a lot of things and you're demonstrating that here today. What do you want to do someday? I don't, I don't know. You don't know. Uh, that's a great answer. And you know, and sometimes it's hard to know what you want to be when you grow up and some people never really discover it. Find something that you really like and that you're surprised that people pay you to do it. Because if you get up every morning and you think, wow, I can't wait to go to work, then you found what it is you like. Let's talk to your last teammate here. Let's go to uh, Nyla. Hey, Nyla. Nyla, what do you like about the Science Bowl? Well, I don't uh, it's a fun game. I hope you have fun when you do it. I do. I'm glad. What would you like to do someday, Nyla? Is you, have you thought about it? Because, uh, let's see, your teammates, one wants to be an astronaut, the other one, he's still not quite sure. What about you? I'm not, I'm not sure. sure. You're not sure either. You're very young, and uh, the problem is there are so many choices. You know, and you know, a lot of people that go through life and they try lots of different things and find something, find something you're good at and you like and people are going to pay you and you're going to be surprised that they want to pay you because you would do it anyhow because it gives you satisfaction and fun. All right, Longfields, if you are ready, here come your last nine questions. Let's get physical for five points. <clears throat> if something is petrified, like a tree, or some of the people in the new Disney movie, Raya and the Last Dragon, they are turned into this. Okay, okay uh, guys, who needs to take this before I steal this answer? Uh, it's going to be uh, Stone. Stone. Stone, I believe. You got it. Yeah. If you're petrified, like the petrified forest in Arizona where the trees have been mineralized and they're all over the ground, they are stones. Good answer. 15 points. Long question, simple answer if you follow. If you follow. You know, there are three states of matter. Solid, liquid, gas. There are different phase changes. Four of them are familiar. Evaporation, condensation, freezing, and melting. But the other two, not so familiar. Sublimation, listen team, Sublimation is changing from a solid into a gas, while deposition is changing what into what? Okay, okay yeah. gas. I'm listening. Yeah. Gas. Gas, to a gas to a solid. Gas to a solid. I heard, heard it absolutely right. Good answer. That was, that was Jared. Jared. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Jared. 25 points. Big question in this category. How many planets are there between Earth and Neptune? Okay. okay. Give me a number. How many planets between Earth and Neptune? I want to see you counting on your fingers. Think okay. about okay, it. Okay, guys, the first thing we need to do is think of, because we already know Earth is three. So, so what is Neptune? Uranus, Uranus, Uranus is the seventh. I'm thinking Neptune, Neptune is either fifth or the, or the sixth. sixth. Anyone, I'm thinking, anyone else know? It's six. Okay, okay so it's six. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to three. Anyone else? It's the, all right, the number between Earth and Neptune. So you're saying three, okay? Yes. Correct answer is if you leave Earth, next is Mars, then Jupiter, then Saturn, then Uranus, and then Neptune. Four is the correct answer there. Let's we go were close. to that was close. potpourri. You were close. Potpourri for five points. It's been found that some animals like humans and squid can be trained to hold back on eating something. You've probably done this. I'm not going to eat that because uh, I know there's something better coming. It's called delayed gratification. It's part of a test named for what sweet treat that typically is found floating on top of a cup of hot cocoa? Uh, marshmallows. Marshmallows is right. Oh, the marshmallow I it the test. Tree. It is the marshmallow <laughs> test. You got it for five points. Potpourri okay. for 15. Let's look at the picture. This is kind of disgusting. This is a blowfly. It feeds on human body fluids. 
it can complicate a crime scene. All right, you're going to be a detective here. For if a fly eats human blood at a crime scene, what telltale genetic material can the fly then poop out, which looks like a splatter of blood, and thus confuse the detectives? What is that genetic material that can be pooped out that can get into the fly if it eats human blood? Okay, okay guys. I think it's either the, the cells or the plasma. I'll go with plasma. That is, that is disturbing. disturbing. It's, it's disturbing. The key word there that you didn't pick up on was genetic. It's DNA. The DNA mm -hmm. in the blood would have gone through the fly and come out, and then if they find that, they say, oh, wait a minute. Here's some evidence mm -hmm. over here of a human, but it had gone through a fly. Mm -hmm. Kind of like uh, Jurassic Park, where they showed the DNA, the DNA in that mosquito that had bitten the dinosaur. Here's the 25-point question in potpourri. Mm -hmm. A chronograph is a kind of telescope that lets you look at the corona or the halo around the sun. There is a disk representing an artificial moon in the center of your field of vision. You're looking through the chronograph at the sun, which you really shouldn't do because it'll blind you. But there's a big circle right in front of that sun so that you can see the corona around the edge. In effect, that telescope has created what rare celestial event that oftentimes we can see here from Earth. Yeah, solar, solar eclipse. eclipse. You got it. An eclipse is absolutely right for 25 points. You got it. You got it. Dateline for five points. Let's get the last three. Here we go. In 1961, the Russian Yuri Gagarin became the first human being to do this, getting the space. attention of the entire world. Go to space. He went into space. Yes, sir. Five points. Fifteen points. The phrase survival of the fittest was not written by what famous evolutionist, but rather by a reviewer of his book on the origin of species. Origin of species. Famous evolutionist. Uh, Charles Darwin? It is Charles Darwin, absolutely right. You pulled that one out of the hat. 25 points. I like this question. This is your last one. Give it your total attention. The first successful transplant of a human organ was a kidney in 1954. The recipient, the person who got the donated kidney, did not reject the organ, as had always happened before, because the donor was what special kind of sibling? Hmm. A special kind of sibling. Sibling. Sibling, relative. Oh, oh. Um, special kind. Uh, brother. It was, it was his identical twin. Twin. Identical oh. twin. An identical twin. So he had the same DNA as the as his brother. So it, the body did not. Re uh, recognize it as a foreign invader. All right, you didn't get that one for 25 points. It's your final tally is 220 points, which sounds pretty good to me. Will it be enough to win? We'll let you know in just a couple minutes because we're going to couple minutes because we're going to bring everybody back on. Nice work there. Well, what a game that was! A clash of the titans. We expected it to be very very close, and it was. You're looking at all of the players out there. Each one played so well today. We're proud of them all. And you know, part of the reason they're so good is because of their coaching. Cheryl Strong and Erica Bear, respectively, from Judith P. Hoyer and from Longfields, both former Teacher of the Year nominees. So the best of the best teachers had the best of the best students, and they've got two great principals out there as well, Tracy Spivey White and Carmen Bell. Our final tally today, is Judith P. Hoyer 210, Longfields 220. So by 10 points, Longfields, congratulations. You will be playing against the winner of our next semifinal for the chance to buy for the county championship. Let's have a nice round of applause for everybody from Longfields 
and from Judith P. Hoyer. What a game you gave us here today. It was any one question could have done it and did do it. Thank you all for being here. And I do hope next year, if you're back, we'll be back here in our studio so we can have you experience Science Bowl as the way we would like you to experience it. But thanks for doing this. Thanks for having the courage to do this and for studying and preparing. Thank you, coaches. Thank you, principals. But most especially, thank you to all of our players. I'm Dave Zarin. Until next time, bye-bye.